Have you noticed? Time does not stand still. As we always say, time flies. And that's exactly our message for today. Hi, my name is Bo Sanchez and welcome to Kerygma TV. I'm praying that you, in whatever stage of life you are in, you will experience the presence of God. And that's our message for you today. Hi everyone, my name is Mike Vinyas and welcome to Wealth and Wisdom. For this episode, we're going to consult once again our financial coach, Chai Santiago. So thank you once again thank for you. being part of this segment. Thank you. So this is a question I want to ask because I've seen this happen really. There are a lot of people today who put off um, saving and investing to a later time. Is this okay? And is there a value? What's the point of having an investment plan early on? I think it's our natural tendency to really enjoy the, the money that we get. And maybe it's okay in the beginning. Para lang, sige, fine, may enjoy mo. But if I may suggest, mas maganda din na una pa lang, masimulan mo na din yung discipline mo. Now, it all boils down to what your priority is. And I think it's also a culture thing, yung YOLO. Diba? Mm. People have this misconstrued YOLO mindset na let's live the most out of today and kung later on wala tayong maitabi, bahala na. But I'm gonna share a fact with all of you guys. In the Philippines, only 2% of the Filipino retirees are actually able to enjoy their wow. retirement. The rest, either nakaasa sa anak, pinipilit pa rin magtrabaho, or iniwan na sa home for the agent. Now, it's up to us, di ba? Ano ba yung gusto natin? Correct. Gusto ba natin na later on we also live that kind of life? Or do we wanna make sure that we, st we still get to enjoy yeah. our life? Today and later on. You don't have to live an or life because mm. you can live an end life. What do you mean by this? You can still enjoy now and enjoy later. The beauty about having a financial plan is that you're able to make sure na yung income that I'm getting now is enough to enjoy yung present life ko. And at the same time, ma-identify ko how much should I be saving? Okay. Kaya, hanggang kailan dapat ako mag-invest? Ano yung dapat kong financial goal? Para saan yung financial goal? Right, when you create right. a financial plan, those, those are the things that you discover. And yung kagandahan kasi doon, hindi ka clueless. Madalas kasi ang mga tao, they just tell people, gusto ko makapag-invest, gusto ko makapag-ipon, pero there's no specific number in there's mind. There's no plan, there's no, no plan goal. Yeah. No right. vision. Right. Siguro to answer it simply, Yes, it's very important to have a financial plan even as early as the start of you working. Doon pa lang, alamin mo na para talagang ma-enjoy mo Correct. yung na long term, mo. Yeah. And at the same time, you're able able to prepare for your long-term needs. Okay. So, this is something that I think we all have to do something about, especially for the young people out there. So thank you very much again for tuning in to Wealth and Wisdom. We'll see you. God bless. We're starting a brand new series today. It's called Stages, Finding God Where You Are. Are you ready to experience more of God today? If you are, then let's pray our favorite prayer at the feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, everybody say, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself so I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. From the book of Ecclesiastes, it says, There is a time for everything. I want you to say that with me. There is a time for everything. I'm 50 plus years old now. I can, I have the luxury of looking back at my life and reflecting on it. I realize that there are four 
distinct stages in the human journey. Four distinct stages. And each stage has a goal. Each stage has a theme. There is a time for everything. And let's, let's ask the Lord to speak to us and bless us today. I'm going to give you an introduction to the entire series. And then all these are going to come and give you talk one. Is that okay? Everybody say, I'm ready. Everybody say, I'm listening. So, so th that's, that's what I'm going to do. Before I proceed with my talk, I just want to share something very important to you. Last week, we were awarded, three of our ministries were awarded by the Archdiocese, New Evangelization, recognizing us for what we're doing. Number one is Grace to be Born. It's a halfway home for pregnant women in crisis. And we received that award, uh, the John Paul II Award. Grace to be Born is an amazing ministry. You know, we've got women who have, they, they got pregnant when they were 14 years old and 15 years old. And instead of aborting the baby, we welcome them and they live with us until they give birth. And sometimes they take their baby home, sometimes they give it up for adoption and we facilitate the process. It's, it's a crazy, beautiful, beautiful ministry. And then second ministry that received an award last week is our very own Light of Jesus Pastoral Care Center, our counseling center. We offer 24-hour counseling, seven days a week. It's manned by volunteers, and we just received that award. We've been doing this for 30 years. It's, it's wild. And then finally, Anuim, our ministry for the abandoned elderly, also received an award. Uh, recognition for our work so it's been amazing why am I sharing this to you because you're part of this ministry you know you're you're there and and you're supporting just want to say thank you and tell somebody beside you congratulations because this is our work okay this is our work all right I want to go to our series and this the title of the series is stages everybody say stages Time flies. You agree with me? It's, it's fast. L life is like a red sports car that wheezes in front of you. And if you blink too long, when you open your eyes, it's gone. I'll give you an example. I'll show you a photo of my two boys when they were small. I want you to especially, of course, the, my, my eldest son, you, don't, you can't see him because he made up a mask. But my youngest son, he still has baby fat there. I want you to see how my youngest son looks like right now. Ta-da! Now, last week, something crazy happened. And it, it was cataclysmic in nature. We were going to a wedding. And my son, my youngest son was in the other room. And he said, Dad, can I borrow your black pants? I froze. O-M-G. It happened. The dreaded day when my whole wardrobe, pants, shirts, shoes are no longer mine. Private property as a concept has disappeared. On that day, we became communists. I mean, think about it. They were still so small. Now they're borrowing my pants. Time flies, right? I, seven years ago, I wrote the book, Enjoy Your Age. Became a bestseller, blessed so many people. That book was saying that if you look at the human journey, each of us have our own spring, our summer, our autumn, and our winter. We're going to dive into that conversation in this series. And right now, I want to preach on this one, one big message. Everybody say, I'm listening. My message is this. God is right here, right now. I want you to tell somebody beside you, God is right here, right now. One more time, one line. God is right here, right now. God is right here, right now. In stage one, there are four stages. In stage one, that's the first 20 years of your life. Anyone around that age, raise your hand. Somewhere around that age. First 20 years. All right. That, 
the goal of that age, that stage, is to explore. Say explore. That's where you want to find out your vision, your identity, your calling, your gifting. That's the time. Last week, we had a jewels conference, and Ma and Mencius, in her talk, I was listening to her, she said, she was speaking to the singles, she said, you've got to already, while you're single, find out who you are and find out your purpose. Why? Ask me why. Because you want to avoid the horror story of married people who have two to three kids, and then they tell their spouse, I'm leaving this marriage. Why? Because I want to find myself. You should do that while you're single, in the first stage. Am I making sense to you? And then in the second stage, the next 20 years, how many of you are 20 to 40? Raise your hand. Okay, if you're 20 to 40, the goal of that stage is to expand. The first stage is to explore. The second stage is to expand. Everybody say expand. To expand your calling, to expand your gifting. That's, that's where, to, to enter into new territories. And then stage three, so stage two, we're going to talk next week, right? Next, and then stage three, next, next week, we're going to talk about people who are between 40 and 60. Raise your hand. 40 to 60. The goal of that is to be exact. Say exact. To zero in. To focus on your calling and your gifting. And to have your greatest impact in the world. And then you move to stage four. 60, 65 and above. I won't ask you to raise your hand anymore. But you know who you are. You have this little white card in your wallet that gives you the pleasure of having short lines everywhere. You are called at that stage, the goal is to prepare for your exit. And there's nothing to be worried or afraid of that. That's the goal, to actually pass the baton, to raise your successors, and, and to ask God, what's your second act? Because you passed on the baton already, maybe to your children and, me, and, and to other people. You know, you want to ask, what's, what, what, what's next, Lord? Is there a, a new world that you want me to enter? So, but in each of these stages, there are two things that are in common in any of these stages. And that is first, ultimate purpose. Everybody say that with me. Ultimate. Meaning to say, in each of these stages, it's the same purpose. There is only one metric of success in all of these stages. Ask me what? It's the metric of spiritual growth. Everybody say spiritual growth. You know what? I don't care. I mean, why? Ask me why. Because your body has an expiry date, but your spirit does not. You, your spirit will go on and on and on. Ten million years from now, your spirit will keep on growing. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and if you do what is right. So the bottom line, everybody say bottom line. The bottom line question of each stage, I don't care what stage you're in, the bottom line question, whether you know you're successful or not, is this question. Am I becoming more selfless? Is my character becoming more like the character of Jesus? Am I becoming more patient? Am I becoming more, more kind? Am I becoming more generous? Am I becoming more humble? Do you understand what I'm saying? That is the purpose. That, that is, that, and, and that spirit, I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how big your house is. I don't care how many likes you get in Facebook. That's not success. Success is your spirit will growth in every single stage of your life. Do you understand me? Number two, the common thing in all these stages is an underlying perspective. Everybody say that with me. <laughs> Human beings are like computers. We have an operating system that's humming behind our acting, our speaking, and our thinking. Every, everybody say operating system. That's your perspective. There are three kinds of operating systems I want to share with you today. The first one is living in your past. I call it the LYP. 
LYP is a very strong operating system. And you know what? It's not very good. These are people, you know if someone is operating on LYP, if they say these, these lines. Nung panahon ko, nung bata ako, uh, you know, when I was a child, well, in, during my time, paborito nilang sabihin yun. And these are people who will exaggerate the goodness of the past and exaggerate the badness of the present and the future. I was reading an article by a religious author. And in the article, he was saying, all social media is demonic. Facebook, IG, lahat demonic now. I was reading the article and I was saying, wow, he needs to say this to Pope Francis. Because Pope Francis has a Facebook page, has an IG page, has a Twitter account, has a, has a YouTube channel. You know, and, but people don't understand it. When TV came in the, in the 1950s, you know, when television came out, there were some people who called it the invention of the devil. And, and they were saying, go back to radio, go back to radio. That's, that's, that's safe. They did not know that when the radio came out in the 1920s, people were calling it also the instrument of the devil. And people were saying, go back to the newspaper, go back to the newspaper. Am I, am I making sense to you? You know, when you exaggerate the goodness of the past and exaggerate the... No, life is a mixed bag. But here's the thing. Another version of LYP is actually when the past is so painful, you get trapped in the past. I'm thinking of, you know, I'm thinking of Brenda. She was deserted, abandoned, left by her boyfriend for another girl, and it devastated her. Here's the problem. It happened six and a half years ago, and she still can't move on. When she looks at the mirror, the only person she sees is Brenda the brokenhearted. No one else. She's stuck in her past. LYP operating system. I'm thinking of Fred. Fred failed in three businesses, one after another. The only person he sees in the mirror now, Fred, the failure. And he thinks that he's going to fail forever. I'm thinking of Monette. You know, if you see Monette, my gosh, you'll, be, you, you'll do this. <laughs> she's so beautiful. It's as though she stepped out of the billboard. Ganung kaganda. Model. Beautiful skin, beautiful hair, wonderful eyes. But you know, when I talk to Monette, my gosh, blew my mind away. She says, Bo, I'm so ugly. I said, what? I'm so ugly. You know, I'm, I'm so super ugly. No wonder, no wonder when, when, when you see her physically, she's very attractive. But there's something wrong. Parang her, her eyes are dull, you know? And I found out why. When she was growing up as a kid, her father and her three brothers called her every day. Pangit. Pangit. Every day. And so, Monette, whenever she looks at the mirror, she only sees Monette, the monster. If you are living in your past and you're trapped and you're in prison, I've got a word for you. This, 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 this word I want to give to you. And I, I want you to hold someone's hand while we read this word. Are you ready? Hold someone's hand. Crush some fingers. And tell this to that person, the Word of God. Tell that person, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Tell that person, are you holding someone's hand? T tell, tell that person, tell that person, baka, baka niya. forget that heartbreak. Forget that rejection. Forget that failure. God is doing a new thing. Amen. And then there's LYF. LYP, living in the past. 
And then there's LYF, living in the future. I'm, I'm prone to this operating system because I'm a dreamer, I'm a planner. But if I'm not careful, the side effect is anxiety. How many of you worry sometimes about the future? All of us, you know, we, 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 we live in the future. We should not, but we do. In fact, Jesus says this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote to you from, from the book of Matthew. Jesus said, Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Tell somebody beside you, do not be anxious about tomorrow. You know, when I travel, I see these tourists. They go to a new place, and it's a beautiful place. The moment they arrive at this beautiful place, you know what they do? They just take pictures. And then they leave. Why? Ask me why. Because they're thinking that one day in the future, they will be in their house, in their living room, sitting in the sofa, reviewing the photos to relive the moment when they were there. But they were not there. There is nothing to relive. Be honest with me. How many of you have a bunch of photos in your phone right now that you have not even looked? Living in your future. This is, this is the problem. You know what? I'm trying to remove this operating system from my life. It's a very, very difficult. I'm trying. I've learned. You know, when I go to a new place now, I take a few photos. And then after that, I stop. I put the phone in my pocket, and then I look at everything. I drink it all in. I experience it, and it's beautiful. I don't only go home with a bunch of photos anymore. I go home with an experience of peace, which brings me to the third operating system. The first one is LYP, living in your past. The second is LYF, living in your future. There is a third, and this is the operating system that God wants you to have, whether you are in stage one or stage two or stage three or stage four. L-Y-N, live in your now. Why? Because whether you're in stage one or whether you're in stage two or whether you're in stage three or whether in your stage four, you've got to be there. You know, you, if people in stage one, you know what they do? Pag nakagraduate ako, masaya na ako. No, while you're still studying, while you're in school, while you're growing up, embrace that moment because God is there. When you're in stage two, you know, don't say, ah, pag mag, may asawa na ako, pag may bahay na kami, we, I, I will be happy when we have kids. No, 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 no. Right now, this moment, God is there. In stage three, you're thinking, ah, sige, sige, uh, you're 45, you're 50 years old. Siguro pag mag-retire ako, ay nako, I will be happy. I will be very, no. While you're working, while you're at your peak, you need to discover that God is there. God is here right now. Do you understand me? I need to speak to you. I, I need to tell this to you. When, when Jesus speaks, you know, the New Testament was written in Greek. And in, in Mark chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, it says, Jesus said, the time has come. The kingdom of God is near. You know what? You know time in Greek it has two, two words, chronos and kairos. And chronos is the movement of time from the past to the present, living in your past, living in your future. But there's another Greek word for time, kairos, this amazing moment now. What word did Jesus use? The time has come. The kairos has come. For Jesus, it's kairos. Wherever you are, you need to open your eyes because God is in your stage. Don't look at the past stage. Don't look at the future stage. Whatever stage you are in, God is right here, right now. When God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, God did not say, I was. 
who I was. He did not say, I will be who I will be. You know what he said? I am who I am. I am here for you. I, your God, am here for you. Whatever stage you are in, whatever age you are in, please know that God is there. He's going to do something new in your life. Put your hand over your chest. Just say this prayer with me. Jesus, I thank you that your word will speak to me and it will change me. My life will be transformed because of your power, because of your presence in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand. Love Him. Love Him today. Amen. If you're on the first stage of life, you're probably in your 20s, okay? We've established that much. And don't worry if you're not part of that stage anymore. I mean, some of you here might already well be in your bonus stage. What is a bonus stage? Well, it's an age where life is already a bonus. Could you look at the person beside you? Is that person in the bonus stage of life? <laughs> Every day you live in the bonus stage, it's a blessing. You agree? So in the next four Sundays, here's what we're going to do. We are going to piggyback on the life of David, King David for some of you, and learn from the four stages of his journey. And today we are so blessed because we get to jump in and see David as a young boy, as a young shepherd boy. And most of you already know this about David, that when he was a young boy, he needed to fight this giant named Goliath. That's right. And you know when he did that? A lot of people questioned him including the king, King Saul. He said to David, how can someone as young and inexperienced as you fight someone as experienced like Goliath? And you know, here's what David says. He says, your majesty, I take care of my father's sheep. Anytime a lion or a bear carries off a lamb, I go after it, attack it, and rescue the lamb. And if the lion or bear turns on me, I grab it by the throat and beat it to death. I have killed lions and bears, and I will do the same to this heathen Philistine who has defied the army of the living God. The Lord has saved me from lions and bears. He will save me from this Philistine. 99% of the time, shepherds lead a very boring, ordinary life. Why? Because all day long, they do nothing but watch over sheep that eat and sleep the entire day. 99% of the time, boring life for shepherds. But there is that 1% when life gets exciting, when life gets a little bit interesting, and life gets even a little bit dangerous. Whenever a lion comes, or a bear comes, or a uh, 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 a wolf comes just like the passage the only thing that's standing between the predator and its prey is the shepherd you get that so what David didn't know is that everything that he would be doing in his ordinary days watching over the sheep feeding the sheep tending the sheep protecting the sheep was already preparing him for the greatest battle of his life in other words, God was already training him for his future calling. And some of you need to hear this because if you only know David as the warrior who defeated Goliath, you might think that David got his gift overnight. A lot of times, whenever you see a person's gift, you only see the gift once it's been fully developed, yes? But you never see the cost of what it took to develop that gift. You don't see the day-to-day. -day. You don't see the, 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 the grind, in other words. Let me put it this way. Sometimes you only get to see the gift, but you never see the grind. And we all know here that before you get the gift, you got to go through the grind. You got to do the work. You got to do the time. You got to show up every day and do this thing and live in the ordinary. But here's the problem. 
We don't like the ordinary. How many of you have ever experienced being bored in life? That's all of us. Even if you, raise, you don't raise your hand, that's all of us. We don't like being bored. We like the thrills and the excitements of life. We look for the extraordinary. But then we miss that God is working in your ordinary. Can I get an amen? God works in the ordinary. God works in the day-to-day. So what do you have to do? You got to be faithful to your ordinary. Can you tell that to the person sitting next to you? Be faithful to your ordinary. Be faithful to your ordinary. This is an area in life, my dear friends, where we can certainly learn a lot from the older generation, the elders, the one who came before us, because it's the people who came before us who lived through a time when there wasn't a lot of options in this world, not a lot of choices. Now we've got tons of options. But back in the day, if you had a job, you, you got to stick through that job. You got to do the work. You got to show up every day. You have to be faithful to your ordinary. That's the only way they survived. Jesus said something very powerful in Luke. He said, whoever is faithful in small matters is faithful in big ones, in large ones. That's very powerful stuff. It's in the ordinary days where God works on your gifting. It's in the common places where God works on your gifting. Can I share with you my personal story? May I? It's not like you have a choice. So, most of you already know this about me. I'm a businessman by nature. I've been in business all my life. My, my, my primary gift in life, sales. I'm a natural salesman. I can sell anything, a product to any client if I put my entire heart into it. And I've been doing it for as long as I can remember. My mom, she owned a small, humble retail outlet back in the day in Green Hills where she sold clothes. And so as young as 13 years old, I would carry around the striped bag to school. Inside the striped bag were Giordano Classics. You remember that? The one with the frog even? And I would sell that on retail to my friends, to my classmates, to my teachers. So it wasn't a surprise when I turned 20 years old, I started selling cellular phones in a Changge, in Makati. And then when I hit 25 years old, I started selling ball pens, keychains, tumblers, umbrellas, or any item where you could put your brand name on. Corporate giveaway. When I turned 27, I started selling cellular phones again, computers, laptops, TVs, MP3 players online in a store called Gadget Grocery. And when I turned 37, that's when I started selling condominiums and houses. And that's what I still do. God has been using my skill for 27 years and He slowly developed it. But guess what? In a span of 27 years, I'm no longer selling a product right now. The biggest product that I'm selling is not even a product. It's a person. And His name is Jesus Christ. Selling has been the gift that God developed in me. And now he's no longer even using it just to bless me. He's using it to bless the people around me. Here's the thing. Your gift, my dear friends, is supposed to glorify God. That's what it's supposed to be for. Whatever your gifting is, don't keep it to yourself. It's not for you to keep, but it's yours to share to the world. Let God develop that gift and then at the right time, let him use it to bless the world. Amen? While God develops your gifting in the first stage of your life, and I'm speaking to the young ones right now, while God develops your, 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 your skills and your talents, he's also developing something that's far greater. You want to know what that is? Ask me what. It's called character. Say character. It's also in the ordinary where God develops your character. It's also in the common days, in the common places where God creates character. It's in the day-to-day -day where He purifies your motives. Can I ask you a question? How many of you here have only attended the feast for maybe a little over a year? Raise your hand. Just a year or maybe a two. I'm going to go out on a limb and ask you. You probably only know me as Brother Audie, the preacher. Yes? Guy who comes out and preaches his heart out every week. But just so you know, I wasn't always a preacher. When I started out in community 11 years ago, more than a decade ago, I served as part of the chorus in the choir. That was my first service. And I still remember it like it was yesterday. Showing up to rehearsals week after week, rain or shine. 
And, and you know, I never even held a mic until many years later. But God taught me something very powerful during this time. He taught me the value of humility, to be satisfied serving in the background. He taught me the responsibility of having to be able to use this thing and teach me that it's not about me. It's about Jesus. It's about somebody greater. And you know, I also served as a runner. What's a runner? I was a delivery boy in ministry. I delivered props. I delivered food. I delivered instructions. I was running around this entire place like it was my playground. But God taught me something very powerful during that time. He taught me the value of selflessness. How to put the needs of others before my own needs. And then I also served as an administrator for our music ministry. Now the admin people, you'll be able to relate to this. My job for four years was very simple. It was so ordinary. My only job was to take down the complete number of servants who will be serving that Sunday and then make a food request for all those servants. Every week. It got to a point where it got really boring and ordinary because every week, same thing, same thing, same number, same task, same job. But God taught me something powerful during that time. He taught me the value of perseverance and patience. Now why am I sharing this thing with you? Because now you need to know that I get to hold the mic here every Sunday and preach to you every Sunday. I recognize the value of humility. And I know it's not about me, it's about Jesus. I know the responsibility of what it takes to lead such a big feast because God taught it to me many years ago. Now whenever people get to serve with me or get to serve me by maybe delivering me food, delivering props, delivering instructions, or maybe even as simple as accompanying me from venue to venue while I serve here, now I appreciate the value of their selflessness why? Because God taught it to me many years ago. In the eyes of many people, my dear friends, what you do might look ordinary to them. But don't take for granted the ordinary because it's in the ordinary day-to-day -day where God is shaping your character. It's where He's humbling you. It's where He's teaching you. It's where He's changing you. So when the time comes for when God puts that calling over your life, you're ready for it. You're ready for battle. Why? Because you have been preparing for it all your life. God prepared you for your calling since day one. And if you're on that first stage of your life, learn how to live and love in the ordinary days because God is using it. Using it to shape you. So no matter how unrewarding, how boring, how insignificant your situation is right now, I want you to declare this with me. Say, God is right here, right now. You know how it changes your perspective about the things that's happening in your life? You don't have to look at the past. You don't have to keep on looking at the future because now you need to train your eyes to look at what God is doing right here, right now and believe that God is planting simple seeds for your great harvest tomorrow. Amen? Amen. Can we come before the Lord here in this place? God in heaven, thank you for this message, for this word that you have planted here today. We believe, Jesus, that you've got a plan for us. And maybe we don't see the plans yet. Maybe it's obscured from our vision right now. Something is preventing us from seeing it. But we don't need to keep looking forward because we need to celebrate what you are doing right here, right now in this season of our life, in this very stage, Lord. Open our eyes to how you are moving, to how you are working, to how you are orchestrating every little thing in our life. We believe, God, that you are writing for us a beautiful story. And we believe that it's not over yet. You've only just begun. We claim a beautiful life ahead, Jesus. But train our eyes to see what you're doing in the present time. And we thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, we pray. Amen.
Ako po si Jolly Arquero. Na-diagnose po ako ng breast cancer stage 2 noong August 2015. This foundation thrives on volunteerism. We gather everybody. We try to collect funds. We try to see what we can do for that gathering. Volunteer ako since uh, September 2015 when JCCFC started. We have uh, pastoral care. Sometimes we have mass. Sometimes we have feast video. Ang mga natutunan ko po na mga aral, mula nung natulungan po ako na umpisa ng GCCF Foundation sa pag-attend ko every meeting, marami po sir. Every time na nandito po ako, nakikita ko po yung mga kapwa ko na masigla. So parang ako'y nabibigyan din po ng saya. Some of the challenges that we have are you know, raising funds. Because unlike other mercy ministries, na donors can give clothes, food, not necessarily money. Since we extend financial assistance to uh, cancer patients, the foundation is heavily dependent on donors. To the potentially new donors, be with us. Because uh, there's no other better way than to help the least of our brethren. Sa mga mabubuting loob dyan at malaking puso na tumutulong sa GCCF Foundation, maraming salamat at malaking blessing po sa amin na mga may sakit at may karamdaman. At naway, huwag kayong magsawang tumulong sa amin dahil marami po kayong nabibigyan ng chance na mabuhay muli. Thank you. Hope begins with you. Thank you and hope begins with you. Thank you. Hope begins with you. You are a blessing to me. You are a blessing to this ministry just by watching and just by praying for us and by telling the world, hey, watch Kerygma TV. It will bless your life. And for those of you who, are, who have decided to be our partners, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. In fact, I'm asking you now, if you have not yet made that decision and, and, and you know, you're hearing God telling you, support Kerygma TV. Please say yes to God and yes, just contact us and, 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 and tell us, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to be a partner. I'm, I'm willing to support your program so that more people will hear God's word and receive God's love. And as our way of saying thank you for any amount whatsoever that you will give this program, we will send back to you a copy of this particular talk that you're hearing. And for a donation of 2,000 pesos or more to this ministry, you shall receive the entire series of stage stages. You know, this, this whole thing just to bless you. It will arrive in your home and you, you, you will be so blessed. Not only that, you will receive my best-selling book, Enjoy Your Age. And this book has blessed so many people already. And people come up to me and they say, you know, Bo, fantastic, fantastic book. It spoke to me. It spoke to my heart. I want to give this book to you as my way of saying thank you for being right here, our partner, our supporter. We can't do this without you. So thank you. Thank you. Once again, just contact us right now. And we'd, we'd love to send this material over to you. God bless you. God reward you for your kindness and generosity. In all of his life, Jesus presents himself as our model. Christ enables us to live in him all that he himself lived, and he lives it in us. In humbling himself, he has given us an example to imitate. Through his prayers, he draws us to pray. And by his poverty, he calls us to accept freely the privation and persecution that may come our way. We must continue to accomplish in ourselves the stages of Jesus' life and his mysteries, and often to beg him to perfect and realize them in us, in his whole church.
Let's come into the presence of God. Join me in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, we recognize you in the specific stage that we are in. We know that even if we don't feel you, or we don't see you, or we don't hear you, you are here. And so we declare our faith, and we ask you, Holy Spirit, come. And we thank you that you will still be our provider. We know that the best is yet to come. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray for every person watching, 
I pray, Lord God, for your provision for their lives, for miracles and for healing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This is Bo Sanchez here in Kerygma TV. Live a fantastic life.